wonderful way to start Christmas morning with our family. I mean, truly with our Christian family. A lot of us go into different places yesterday or today with our other family, and this is just really, really special for us. So, um, beautiful worship, huh? I just uh, just praise God. Just what a time to just enter into His presence and just uh, realize what the season is all about. And we have a real special presentation. Before we do, I am going to go over a couple of bulletin announcements. If you haven't yet signed up for Dinners 8, that is where you get together with uh, six other people if you're a couple or seven other people for singles and couples of uh, different ages, would encourage you to do so. You could sign up either with this uh, URL link. There's a place right there in your Bible for a tiny URL link there on the very, where is that at? Is it on the back side? Yep, on the back side where it's the Senate for Dinners 8. encourage you to do that. Today's the last day to do that. Or you could just write, I want to be in Dinners 8. You know, put your name and phone number and put in the tithe box there, and you'll be, you'll be able to join us during that time. And then uh, next year we have all the different activities kicking up with the men's breakfast, the women's breakfast, a lot of things happening. When we come back in January, we're going to be having a women's, excuse me, a children's ministry meeting luncheon, and that's on the calendar there in the middle on the 7th there, and we'd like you to come and join us if you could on the 8th, excuse me, and so, uh, and if you'd like to be involved or helping with the toddlers even in next month in January or being uh, an actor uh, that we have in our situations plays that we do with our kids. We need a couple ladies to help out with Clementina, a 10-year-old girl. So see uh, Bill or Holly if you're interested for uh, that's next, uh, next week. So um, let us know. We are heading to the Ark Encounter and Creation Museum. We're going to be doing that in June. And if that's something you'd like to come and join us, do sign up officially at, on the website. Go to CC Gridley, and there's some tabs to actually sign up and to put your deposit down. And um, we are going to have it open until April 23rd or until the, the buses are filled. And so we'll let you know. And so if you're interested, please do that. We're trying to get a head count and a hotel count. We have Through the Bible in a Year, and we are finishing up uh, this year with those of us that are going through it together. And if you haven't gone through the Bible in a year and you want to do an audio tape, again, there's a URL link right there that you could sign up and join and go through it. And it's about 10, 15 minutes a day that you just listen to God's Word, or you can read it and do whatever you want, or see Bill if you have a problem, and he'll hook you up and taking care of that whole setup. And if you uh, do give tithes and you like to make sure that's accounted for with your taxes, today's the last day unless you do it on the app uh, for that to account. On the right-hand side, we are going to have the men's uh, share care at my house, but the women's going to be canceled. And there is the Bible study both at, uh, it's going to be at Paul's house for next week. Is the Oroville going to be going? Anybody know the Oroville? Yes, the Oroville is going to be next week also. So we'd encourage you to come and join in that period of time. And so praise God. So again, today is a day like no other day that we have. This is the day that we're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And we have a couple of young ladies here that's going to start us off because we actually have a presentation that's called Live from Bethlehem. So, so close your eyes, and then open them, boom, now we're in Bethlehem. And just like that, <laughs> the magic of the stage. And so, uh, but, you know, before, we, we, there, we, nobody's doing this to be acknowledged, and so I'm not going to make a big deal, but there are people who have worked behind the scenes to get things ready as you can look at. And so praise God, and just so, just so you know, I just appreciate all the people that are involved in all that they're doing. The Lord appreciates all that too. And so I just want to just uh, say thank you for all the behind-the-scenes people. And you'll see different, uh, we actually have commercials today. But, oh, shush, I shouldn't have said that. So uh, without further ado, I want to present to you live from Bethlehem. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. We begin this program with a note. This news production, Live from Bethlehem, contains elements of truth and fiction. While the birth of Jesus really happened over 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, a news broadcast of the event did not occur. There were no field reporters on scene interviewing people, no cameras to take pictures or videos with, and no commercials. Even though we mentioned three wise men, the biblical text doesn't say how many there actually were. While in Bethlehem, Joseph and Mary sought shelter, most likely among relatives and not in the inn. 
But due to the census, many people were returning to Bethlehem, including Joseph's other out-of-town relatives. Because the traditional guest room, the Cataluma, was already taken, Mary and Joseph may have slept in the lower level, where the animals were brought in at night. There was often a manger, a feeding trough for animals, which was carved into the floor or built into the wall. Luke 2, 6 says that days have passed while they were there, before the birth occurred. So at some time during this day, but not on the night of their arrival in Bethlehem, Jesus was born and laid in a manger. With that said, we invite you to enjoy our production. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You ought to have a son and to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. How can this be, Mary asked. For I am a virgin, the angel answered. The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so that the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. He will, the Lord God will give him the reign over the crown of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be? Well, I'm a virgin. Even your relatives, Mary, in her old age, will have a child. For well, it is said, she who could not conceive will have, be in her sixth month. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May your words to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Good evening. I am Hope of Jericho. And I am he Evie of Hebron. And welcome to the Evening News. We start tonight's broadcast with the traffic update. There was a major camel accident on the road to Bethlehem. With traffic volumes high, due to the census issued by Caesar and people returning to their hometowns to be counted, folks need to be alert and watch out for distracted riders. That's right, Hope. It's been reported that distracted riding was the cause of the accident, which had over 50 camels involved. Authorities say the number of injured is at 75, and that number is expected to rise. Authorities are advising that you avoid the main route to Bethlehem and, if possible, detour through fields or side roads. We'll bring you more details as they become available. Thank you, Evie. Distracted camel riding is becoming a real problem as younger riders always check their satchels instead of always keeping their eyes on the road. We will be right back after this quick announcement. Shalom. Are you a fisherman? Do you have ropes in your nets? Are you tired of watching your prophets just swim away? Well, good news. There is help just at the tip of the pool. Here at NetMenders, we can repair the holes in your net, whether it was caused by a miniature minnow or a titanic tuna. And our minnow is guaranteed for 12 months or 12,000 fish, whichever comes first. 
so we can get you back on the water in no time. Whether you are fishing the Sea of Galilee, the Mediterranean Sea, or just the Jordan River, remember, there is a net to be used near you. And tell them the light is We are continuing our week-long report on the census. As you already know, Caesar Augustus has issued a decree that a census will take place of the entire Roman Empire. So this recent decree for a census has caused a flurry of activity in and around Judea. But before the counting can begin, thousands of people must wind their way back to their birthplaces from the far corners of our fair land. All week long, we have been taking you to different towns and reporting on what is happening there. Tonight's town is Bethlehem. Here is our local reporter, Carlene of Bethlehem. Thank you, Evie. And I have to say, that Elijah's quite a looker. <laughs> I am here on the streets of Bethlehem, as you can see. And it's quite chilly out here. But the people don't seem to mind. They're out here taking selfies, enjoying the sights, and just enjoying some family time. So, after the announcement of the decree, I have been interviewing local families that have been offering their houses to their out-of-town relatives. I also have been interviewing the out-of-towners. Some of them only traveled a few miles to get here to Bethlehem to be counted and to stay with their relatives. Others have traveled as far as Caesarea. And a few days ago, I interviewed this couple, and they came here all the way from Galilee. And from the looks of it, she was quite pregnant. Okay, let's interview some people here tonight and ask them about their travels. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Yes? And what is your name? My name's Jess. That's J-E-S-S. -S. I'm from the Eastern Valley. Am I on TV? Why, yes. I'm Carlene from the Evening News. I'm sure you've seen me. <laughs> so, what brings you here to Bethlehem tonight? Oh, I'm traveling with my husband. He has to be counted in the census. Dave! Dave! Dave, where are you? Dave, come here, Dave, look! What? We're on TV! TV? Really? Well, bust my seams! <laughs> Why, yes, sir, Dave, we are. And uh, are you a native of Bethlehem? Born and raised here. I'm a tent maker by trade, as was my father and my father's 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 and my father's father's Thank you. And tell us about your travels here. It wasn't too bad. The roads were crowded, but just fine. Until we hit this congestion this morning about those stinky camels. Oh, yeah. And many moons ago, we saw this nice young couple. What were their names? Joseph and... And Mary, remember, sweetheart? It was Mary. She was such a sweet young thing and so pregnant. Yeah, I remember... Yeah, obviously their first child. I remember when Jess and I had our first child. It was a dark and stormy night. Ah, uh, thank you for that detailed report of your travels. So this has been... Carlene from the Evening News. I'm here in the busy streets of Bethlehem, and this has been just one of the many stories that are being played out here tonight. Evie and Hope, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Carlene. After the commercial break, we will give you an update on a story we brought you earlier this week about the Hebrew prophecy proclaiming the coming of a new king for Jewish people. Please enjoy this message from our sponsors. Hi, how y'all doing today? Are you tired of your sacrifices getting away from you before you can get to the temple? Then come to Uncle Vern's. I have everything you need to make your sacrifice mean everything. I have the firstborn of everything you need. All well, these are kind of older, but I have the younger ones out back. Why well, bring them to the temple when you can just get them at the temple? Just remember, 
If it ain't from Uncle Burns, it ain't clean enough. Welcome back, viewers. As we stated before the break, there is an update on the story regarding a Hebrew prophecy of a coming king. Ancient prophets have been writing about his coming for hundreds of years, yet we still have not witnessed his arrival. That's right, Evie. Some local folks speculate and are hoping that the long-awaited Messiah will come with armies and power to overthrow Herod and free them from Roman oppression. There's even talk that he will come from the line of David right here in Bethlehem. Additionally, as more and more people arrive in Bethlehem for the census, we can't help but wonder, is the arrival of the long-prophesied Messiah and Savior close at hand? Our correspondents, Audrey of Bethel and Pamela of Ashdod, are ready to tell us more about this Messiah. They've been looking at the scriptural aspect of this event. Good evening. Pamela and I have started to do some research on the coming of the Messiah, and we have found some extraordinary findings. According to the scholars we spoke to, the scripture described the awaited Messiah's birth in detail. From the prophecy of Micah, which was written approximately 800 years ago, we learned that the Messiah will be born in the tribe of Judah, in the region of Ephrathah, in the town of Bethlehem. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are little among thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting. Micah 5.2 And from Isaiah 7.14, which was written 700 years ago, we learn that he is to be born of a virgin. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and will call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. It is revealed in Psalm 72, 9-10, that Jesus will be worshipped by the shepherds from the desert, and that the foreign kings will present gifts to the Savior. Those who dwell in the wilderness will bow before him, and his enemies will lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and the isles will bring gifts. The kings of Sheba and Seba will offer gifts. That's pretty amazing. Do you know of any other scriptures that will support that this child is the Christ child? Yes, in Deuteronomy Moses was telling the Israelites that the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me in your midst from your brethren, whom you shall hear. Deuteronomy 18.15 So you think that by what this scripture is saying, that the child will be a prophet? Um, yes, this child is the one that we've been waiting for. He is the Messiah. Feel free to send us a tweet or a Snapchat photo of this so-called coming Messiah. I'm sure Herod is not too happy about this prophecy and just wants it to go away. Furthermore, since the prophets have been talking about it for hundreds of years and nothing has happened, I'm not holding my breath for any breaking news. We continue tonight's broadcast with our top story, the census and the havoc it's causing in Bethlehem. For more on this story, we go to our reporter, Georgia of Jerusalem. Georgia? Hello, I'm Georgia of Jerusalem, and I'm in the streets of Bethlehem talking to the people. Ma'am, excuse me. Can you, can, have you found a place to stay, or do you own a house here in the city? Actually, I own my own place just outside of town. Is anyone staying with you? My whole extended family is here, 20 people in total. My husband and I are sleeping on the floor for the next few days. I must be going. I have to go to the market to stock up on some food. I tell you, all of those people will eat you out of house and home. Thank you for your time, ma'am. Here's another person. Sir, excuse me, sir. Can you tell me if, you, if you've opened your house to anyone that's come out of side of town? What? I won't let a mouse in my house, let alone any of those people. They expect you to feed them and their animals and give them a bed with clean linens. I am not a hotel. So let me guess, you and your camera crew are looking for a place to stay? Well, forget it. I only have a two-room house here in town. I don't have room for any of you people. <laughs> Sir, no. Here's one more person. 
Sir, excuse me, do you have time to talk to us? Why, yes, I do. Thank you. Can you tell me if you found a place to stay during the census? Yes, actually, I've had a place for about a month now. I expected this kind of turnout. Do you know if there's any room left at the place you're staying? Oh, no. They ran out of room since yesterday afternoon. Would you ever give up your room to someone that really needed it? No way. First come, first serve. Thank you, sir. Back to you, Evie and Hope. Well, if that's any indication of the troubles this census is causing, I'm sure Caesar will think twice about requiring another one. If you have any photos or comments about the census, please tag us or use hashtag BCCensus. I repeat, that's BCCensus. Before we go live to our field reporter, Mark of Shechem, we need to take a commercial break and hear a word from our sponsors. Welcome back, folks. Let's go now to a live report from the fields outside of Bethlehem. Mark? Thank you. I am Mark of Shechem, and I am here in the beautiful hills of Bethlehem to talk to the shepherds about what the census means to them. Shepherds. Oh, excuse me, miss. Uh, Have you been to your hometown to take part in the census yet? Why, yes, I'm a local from Bethlehem, so I didn't have to travel far. What do you think about the massive amounts of people coming into the city? Well, it's been so hard to keep our sheep all together. All these people keep showing up in the fields. Can't they take the road or something? I see. Uh, Will you be glad when the census is over? Oh, yes. Well, at least we won't have to chase our sheep all over the place, and we can keep them where they need to be. I see, I see. Fear not. Yikes! Too late for that! (laughs) Lights, please. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in the manger. (laughs) <laughs> Am I hallucinating? Are you seeing this? Can you believe it? Did you hear what the angel said? <laughs> Wait, more angels, look! Thank <laughs> you. 
Wow, amazing. I was terrified at first, but then I felt this sense of peace all around us. We have to go. We have to go find the baby they said would be lying in a manger. I think our story has changed direction. This is much bigger than the census. Uh, thank you, Mark of Shechem. Well, folks, you heard it here first. The ancient prophets may have been onto something with their baby theory. We will be back with more exciting news about the Savior's birth after this brief message. Are you tired of trying to pick up leaves with your pitchfork and having no success? What I have for you is going to be revolutionary. It's called the Magic Shovel. The Magic Shovel allows you to actually scoop up those unwanted leaves and you can get rid of them to clear your walkway. But today, for only three shekels, you can get the Magic Bucket. The Magic Bucket allows you, we're using your Magic Shovel, you can pick up those unwanted leaves, put them into your Magic Bucket for disposal. Buy your Magic Bucket and Shovel today. Welcome back, folks. During the commercial break, we received these photos from various eyewitnesses. Take a look. They are incredible. Hi folks, this is Justin. We're getting some reports of an unusual light, a very bright star that is shining over Bethlehem. As a matter of fact, I think we saw it in a few pictures we just showed you. Those who've seen it say it's the brightest star they've ever seen. Do we have a crew that we can send to the scene? Do we know if the star is shining on some place or someone in particular? Well, we don't have answers to these questions yet, but we're working on them. For those of you who are joining our broadcast, we are following a breaking story that is happening in and around Bethlehem tonight. Oh, mm hmm Well, we're being told that our international correspondent, Nate of Babylon, is live with this very interesting story. Good evening. I have a very special privilege to introduce to all my guests the wise men of Persia. I hear you have something very special to tell us this evening. Yes, hi, I'm Misty the Magi, and we are looking for the one who has been born King of the Jews. For years, we have studied the stars and the ancient writings. The scripture told of this bright star that would lead us to the promised king. And here you go, a very unusually bright star. Could you tell us what scripture told you this? Of course, Numbers 24, 17, it says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will rise out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads. Of, of all of, of Moab us of skull the skulls of all the people people of sea by the way my name is Maverick the Magi what does this mean Maverick the Magi 
God will place a, a star in the east to lead us to our Savior, the King. How are you going to find the baby? Isn't it very hard to follow a star? Not for us. We are experienced stargazers. I am Lisa the Magi, and this is Tony the Magi, and Jonathan the Magi. <laughs> You've already met the other two Magi. What is your plan? First, we are going to the palace of King Herod, and then he should know where his successor is, and we will bring these gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. He deserves so much more. He's the most awaited Messiah. God is the Son. God's Son. As prophet Isaiah writes, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So you're telling me this star did not appear out of nowhere? It has a meaning and a purpose. It is leading you uh, to the Messiah, Savior, King, that has been prophesied for centuries? That is unbelievable. And I thought my family was weird. Back to you, Hope! <laughs> we have to take a break, but we'll be right back after this message. Leading 
And we're back. What a night we've had, folks. What was supposed to be a typical evening around Bethlehem has turned into just the opposite. The camel accident, the census debacle which caused an influx of travelers to Bethlehem, then angels appearing out of nowhere to sing about a savior being born in a manger in Bethlehem, and finally magi about to travel many miles following a mysteriously bright star that will lead them to the Messiah? Let's go back to Mark of Shechem. Mark, what can you tell us? We're all dying to know. Well, Hope of Jericho and Evie of Hebron, the shepherds and I are just entering the city now of Bethlehem. We are trying to find out where the Messiah is. Tell me, have you seen the couple that's expecting a child? Why? It's funny that you ask. I have, but why would you want to know? Well, that's great, exciting news. We've been told by the angels that the Messiah would be born tonight, and they said we would find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. What? I'll take two of them. That's what you <laughs> Everyone, I think we found the, the baby. We found the spot where the mysterious bright star is shining. Uh, I don't know if you can see this back at the studio, but the star is shining directly over this place. Uh, we will be back with hopefully more exciting news after this short commercial. Say. Are you bothered by the odor your favorite camel gives after a long day under the sun? Is your stable beginning to draw flies? After a long day on your camel's back, does your spouse say, welcome home sweaty instead of sweetie? Well, come clean with Quick Clean Camel Cleaner. It really does the trick, and it's so easy to use. Simply rub the pleasant smelling lotion on your camel's skin once every hour for three days. And before you can say Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you'll have the sweetest smelling drone dairy on the block. And it smells great too. So remember, look for Quick Clean Camel Cleaner in the Easy Spray On bottle. And for those stubborn smells, try the new 20 Camel Team Strength in the 5 gallon bucket. Let's these crazy commercials on the air. Oh, welcome back to the evening news. Let's go back to our correspondent, Mark of Shechem. Mark? Well, Evie, this is unprecedented. Never in all of my years of journalism have I reported on a story quite as riveting as this one. Let me set the scene. We are here by the house where the bright star is shining. Inside, there are family members, shepherds, animals, and a young mother and father who have just brought a baby into the world. They are uh, calm and sort of blown away by the uh, events that have, all the attention they have been getting tonight. Well, rather than listen to me go on and on, I want to get their side of the story. Excuse me, Mary, Joseph, may I ask you some questions? Of course. What would you like to know? Well, to begin with, who is this baby? Uh, I've heard a lot of people who think they know who he is, but as his mother, you would know best. How can this baby be the long-awaited Messiah of the world? Well, he does look like a regular baby, but he's not. He's God's son. He may be a tiny baby now and may have been born in this humble 
a place, but he will grow up and be a king. He will bear the weight of the world on his shoulders, and he will be the savior of the world. <laughs> savior of the world? <laughs> Seriously? Well, it was the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy when I was in Nazareth, and an, when an angel came to me, and he said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. I was afraid, not quite sure what that meant, but the angel continued. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom. There will be no end. The angel explained that the Holy Spirit will come upon me, the power of the Most High will overshadow me, and the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Who am I to question a messenger from the Most High God? We all know that nothing is impossible with God. Huh. And Joseph, how did you take the news? Did uh, you believe Mary when she told you the story of the angel encounter? And and by the way, there I can I say there have been many angels and uh, few quite a few angel appearances lately. Uh, they are busy. Oh, uh, wait. Let me guess. You had an angel appearance too. Yes, Mark of Shechem. An angel appeared to me in a dream, and the angel said to me, Joseph, son of David. Do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And just like that, and at first this was very, very hard to accept, but I quickly learned that God had bigger plans for our lives than we could ever have imagined. His plans are better, and we are humbled that we would be the parents of this amazing baby. Wow, this is a lot to take in. Back to you in the studio, Evie. Indeed. Please enjoy this message from our sponsors. Born in a stable, humble Savior's birth. You left your throne in heaven above to live here on the earth. Baby Jesus, lying in a manger, crying for the world. The angels told the shepherds of the good news for us all. Thank you. 
Welcome back, folks. Are you as stunned as I am? Could it be true? Was the savior of the world born tonight? Mark, what else can you tell us? Let me start by saying that I have been a skeptic when it comes to the prophecy of a Messiah, a savior. All of our lives, we've heard that same story, that one day we would be rescued by the Son of God. So when reports came in about Angel's message and the mysterious bright star. I didn't make much of it. But now, standing here next to Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus, I do believe that this baby is God's son and the savior of the world. You are right, Mark of Shechem. This is an exciting and holy night. It is a night like no other. God's son was born right here in Bethlehem. He wasn't born into a palace. He wasn't born into earthly wealth. No, this little baby sleeping here so peacefully and whose beginnings were so lowly and so humble will one day save the world. Praise God. Thank you for letting us share with your viewers the wonder of our Jesus' birth. We pray that all those who have seen this broadcast will trust that this baby is the Messiah, God's son, and that all those who trust him and love him will be saved. Thank you, Mary and Joseph. Sweet dreams, baby Jesus. Hope and Evie, back to you in the studio. Thank you for an incredible report, Mark of Shechem. The world as we know it has changed. The God who loves us so much has burst through space and time to dwell among us. He is here. God is with us. We hope you enjoyed going on this journey with us tonight. I believe we have not seen the last of this baby. Like his mother Mary said, Jesus will change the world. Well, that's all from us tonight, folks. We invite you to tune in tomorrow night as we investigate the effects of dehydration on our camel population. Could shrinking humps really be a danger to the rider? Until then, good night from the evening news. the sheep we watched at night glad tidings brought an angel bright how great our joy great our joy 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 praise we the lord in heaven on high praise we the lord in heaven on high there shall be born so he did say in Bethlehem, a child today, how great our joy, great our joy, 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 praise we the Lord in heaven on high, praise we the Lord in heaven on high. There 
shall the child lie in a stall. This child who shall redeem us all. How great our joy, great our joy. Joy, 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 joy. Praise we the Lord in heaven on high. Praise we the Lord in heaven on high. This gift of God will cherish well. That ever joy our hearts shall fill. How great our joy, great our joy. Joy, 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 joy. Praise we the Lord in heaven on high. Praise we the Lord in heaven on high. Happy birthday, Jesus. There we go. Praise God. What a beautiful message we heard this morning. And, and I, I just praise God for all, all this. And I was just sitting there. I just, you know, teared up several times, just thinking of everyone and all the time they put in to, to share this message that was so clear. Paul, the greatest apostle uh, that ever walked this earth, shared this to his, uh, he called it his son in the faith, Timothy. And he wrote this in Timothy 1.15. And he shares what I believe the true meaning of Christmas is and why Jesus came into the world. He said, Timothy, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Isn't that amazing? That's what he said. You, you want to know what a faithful saying is, what's worthy of all acceptance is this. Jesus Christ came in the world to save sinners. And then Paul, who was a Pharisee, who was a religious leader, added this last point. He says, of whom I am the chief. Paul, a religious leader, a Pharisee, realized, if I could think of anyone who's a greater sinner than me, I don't know who it is. And that's kind of how we feel. We know our own hearts. We know, we know that we've all fallen short. You know, he, he was persecuting Christians, and we've all done things that we're ashamed of. And that's the real reason why Jesus left heaven and came down in the form of a little baby, and that's because we need a Savior. Each one of us have sinned. Each one of us have violated God's laws and commandments. We've all earned Eternal damnages, the wages of our sin is what? Death. Each one of us has done that. And, and God actually says that we were by nature children of wrath, alienated from him in rebellion against God. But this is the real Christmas story. The real Christmas story is God still knows all this about us, and he still loves us so unconditionally that it says in Ephesians 2, 4, and 5, but God, who is rich in mercy... Because of his great love which he has, and he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together in Christ, for by grace you are saved. That's the whole true meaning of Christmas, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomsoever believeth in him, what? Will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to what condemned the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's John 3, 17. And then we've got to realize that he came not to condemn you. He came to give you eternal salvation. God demonstrated his love for each one of us that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And that's why we should celebrate Christmas so as we go out and we have fun and we enjoy Christmas, and you, if you have a tree and you look at your tree and you have lights on it, just remember the true light, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. As you exchange gifts, you remember that it was the Magi, right? 
that gave the gift to Jesus. We don't overemphasize it, but it's a way of showing love and joy for others. If you got an angel on top of your tree, remember, remember the angels that proclaimed the joy, or a star, the star of Bethlehem. All these point to the true meaning of Christmas, that we don't ever forget that. The key is to keep our eyes on the ultimate gift giver, and most of all, on the ultimate gift, and that's Jesus Christ. If you've never received Jesus Christ, if you've never received that gift, never opened it and received it to yourselves, I'd like to give you an opportunity. Let's all close your eyes and pray. Father, we come to you, Lord, with this, this uh, chance to just thank you for just a wonderful uh, way of a uh, medium just to see what you've done for us, God. And Lord, may you just ask, Lord, if there's anyone here who's never received the gift of Jesus Christ and you'd like to do so, lift your hand up. Is there anyone here this morning? If you're watching online, say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Praise God. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord. As we go out for the rest of the day, Lord, thank you for letting us start with what the most important thing of Christmas is, and that's the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we ask this in your name. And they all said, Amen. God bless you guys, and Merry Christmas. Merry